Hi, Susan and I are back again. Hi, Susan. See, Susan's paying a little more attention now. See, she doesn't look like Mia. She looks like she's going to eat Mia. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, so we are back for another wonderful story. This will be um, 11.5 and 11.6 in your OLS. Okay, the story is The Country Mouse and the City Mouse. All right, so it is in this book. Hopefully you have it nearby because the story that you read for 11.3 and 11.4, which was The Little Rabbit with the Red Wings, was also from this book, okay? We've been reading a whole lot from this book, okay? So in a second, you're going to pause the video and you're going to go get it. And then we're going to turn to page 184. And remember, if we're not sure where to find it, look in the front of the book in that wonderful thing called the Table of Contents. Are you ready to go pause the video and go? Okay. All right. All right. All right. You're back. You got to stop scaring me like that. Okay. All right. Turn to page 184 and we're going to do a brief picture walk like we always do because that helps us kind of get ready to jump into the story. So if it's called the country mouse and the city mouse, I wonder what type of animal or animals this story might be about. Dinosaurs, maybe whales, <gasps> grasshoppers. The title of the story is The Country Mouse and the City Mouse. So think about what that might be about. All right. So I see right underneath the title on page 184, I see mice and they're, they're dressed. Okay. So we know this is make-believe. Mice don't dress up in clothes, at least on their own. Okay. But I see them and they look at a table. Okay. I see somebody with a hat. All right. Now looking down at page 185, I see the biggest, yummiest fruit pie. I wonder what kind that could be. It's red that um, I think the mice are enjoying also. Mice is more than one mouse. We don't call them mouses. We don't call them meeses either. They're called mice. Okay, turn the page. All right, page 186. Wow, there is a cat and it's kind of silly drawn. It's got some really crazy teeth. Yikes. And the mice, I can't tell if they're smiling or not. One does not look like she's smiling. They might be running. And then I see apples at the bottom. A cat and apples, of course. Okay, look at page 187, and the mice are, again, I think one's smiling and one isn't, but what is that with the cheese on it? It's a mouse trap. I wonder, I don't know about that. What, what do you normally do with a mouse trap and there's mice there? Do you think they're going to take the cheese? All right, turn the page. Oh, and then the story's over. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so let's see what this is about because I was getting so into the pictures that, I got to the end of the story. Excuse me. Okay, page 184. Are we ready, Susan? We're ready. Okay. Page 184, the country mouse and the city mouse. And remember, this is OLS for Indiana Digital Learning students, particularly first grade, but for anybody that wants to enjoy. And this is 11.5 and 11.6. The country mouse and the city mouse. Once there was a mouse. She lived in the country. One day, her cousin came to see her. Her cousin lived in the city. I see the title now. The country mouse was very glad to see her city mouse and asked her to stay for dinner. Thank you, said the city mouse, and she took off her hat and coat and helped put the dishes on the table. That explains the picture. Bottom paragraph. When dinner was ready, the city mouse looked at the corn and the beans and said to herself, What a funny dinner! Not a bit of cake or cheese. Page 185. Come to my house, she said. I have cheese every day for my dinner. Thank you very much, said the country mouse. I'll go. So the two mice went to the city. When they got there, they were very hungry. Come to the kitchen, said the city mouse. I'll show you where the cook keeps the things. The city mouse ran across the kitchen and into a big closet. The cook made a pie, she said. I must she looked around in the closet until she found the pie. Here it is, said the city mouse. This is better than corn and beans. What do you think? Turn the page. 186. Just as they were beginning to eat, they heard a terrible noise in the kitchen. What do you think that noise might be? Look at the picture. What's that? asked the country mouse. That's the cat, whispered the city mouse. Run! Not Susan. She's drooling everywhere. Both mice ran. When they were safe, the country mouse asked, 
Why did you run? Never stay in the kitchen when the cat comes, said the city mouse. She would eat you up. We will go to the cellar and find some apples. I like apples. So away the two mice went to the nice cool cellar. What a lot of apples, said the country mouse, and there is a big pot of soup. Do you smell cheese? I do. Yes, I smell cheese, said the city mouse, but we won't eat it. It is in a trap. What is a trap? asked the country mouse. The city mouse showed her the trap. The cook puts the cheese in it, said the city mouse, but if you eat the cheese, something comes down hard on your head and pfft, kills you. The country mouse looked at the trap. I will go home, she said. I do not like your house. There is a cat in the kitchen and a trap in the cellar. I like my corn and beans better than your pie and apple. What do you think the lesson of this story might be? Think about how City Mouse had come to where I live and how much better is everything. Do you think that Country Mouse feels the same way? Now, she doesn't get cheese and cake all the time, but does she have to deal with traps and cats? Hmm, where would you rather live, the city or the country? Te amo, I love you so much. Bye.